Get ready because today we are diving into the world of flatter clean architecture. It is a road less traveled, but trust me, the destination is worth every step. If you have ever wondered how to keep your flatter projects clean and well organized, you are in the right place. We are about to uncover the hidden principles of clean architecture. Flutter clean architecture isn't just about organizing code, it is about creating elegant, maintainable, and scalable apps. So, if you are ready to level up your Flutter game, smash the subscribe button and hit the like button because we are about to take your coding skill to the next level. So, let's dive into the world of Flutter clean architecture. When starting on creation of a new feature, it is essential to begin from the core, which is the domain layer. In the context of our application, we will initiate from the domain layer. However, before we dig into that, let's ensure you have the necessary information. So, we're about to develop a note-taking app, this app, utilizing the SK of Lite package for the database and using the block pattern for the state management. Clean architecture is a principle dictate that the domain layer should remain free from implementation specific like UI frameworks or state management libraries. It is all about focusing on the business logic and rules without trying to any particular tech. The blocks and the state management should live in the application or presentation layer, which deals with the UI and the state. This way, the domain layer can execute business logic and fetch data without knowing about state management details. This separation simplifies maintenance and testing, ensuring a clean and flexible structure. So, let's get started with the domain layer. It includes entities, repositories, use cases, and exceptions, as well as potential failures. Well, let's start by creating the core entity. An entity plays a fundamental role in your application, representing its business logic and the data structure. It is straightforward Dart object and that encapsulates essential data and behavior. And it is independent of any specific frameworks, databases, or like user interfaces. Entity is a model which is like the key concept or domain object within your application. In our case, node entity is a crucial element within the core domain, which is going to represent a node in the application business logic. Next, we establish our failures folder and corresponding files. Here, you have defined or we have defined the possible failure and their handling. These potential failures may differ based on your specific application. When we move forward, we create our repositories. To do this, we set up the repository folder and create the repository file and design an abstract. And within this class, we define the add node method, which takes a node entity object and returns a feature containing either failure or node entity. And this mechanism is facilitated by the darts package. If the process succeeds, it returns the right side, which is node entity object. In case of failure, it returns the left side, representing our failure. This repository serves as a gateway to the data layer. Don't forget, repositories are a gateway to the data layer. And on our next step, we are going to create the use cases. And to achieve this, we create the use case folder first and not use case of that file, this file. This file holds the actions that our app will execute and serves as the gateway to our state management. We have said that repositories are the gateway for the data layer and the use cases are the gateway for the state manager or literally the presentation layer. We craft class which takes a node repository object as a constructor parameter. And this class contains an execute method and returning a feature that contains either failure object or a node entity. Within this execute method, we call the rnode method. In clean architecture, employing custom exceptions, selectively catching exceptions and like Crafting an application-specific exceptions handling is a recommended practice. So, let's create the exception folder to hold our exception and then create this exception.dat file at the following code here. Here, the database exception class is a custom exception class that can be used to handle and represent exceptions related to the database operations or errors. And it extends a built-in exception class, which is a base class for all exceptions in Dart. And this class allows you to create and throw a specific exception related to the database issue. And in this file, you have a flexibility to add additional exceptions as needed and to align with your specific application requirement. And with the compilation of our domain layer, here we are the, like creating our domain layer. We can now proceed to build our data layer. Within our data layer, our initial step involves creating this 
growth model class. Defining its properties and creating the class contractor as shown in this code. Next, we proceed to establish the data source folder, which will encompass any files related to the data, including both remote and the local data source. For now, let's focus on creating the local data source. Within the data source folder, we create the local data folder and develop the database helper class. This class serves as a crucial helper class, which is going to offer methods for initializing, accessing, modifying the database. It includes functions for like inserting, updating, deleting, and retrieving nodes from the database. And the database in this case consists of table named nodes, featuring columns for ID, title, text, and the date. The code is encapsulated within a database helper class, following the singleton pattern to ensure that only one instance of the database helper is created. Under the data source folder, we then create a node local data source file. This particular file handles the implementation of local data source. And this node local data source is an abstract class, which is going to outline the methods for adding nodes. This method is an asynchronous method and returns a feature of node object. And the node local data source implementation class, which we are going to create right now, class implements the node local data source interface. And it maintains a private instance of database helper, which serves as a helper class for the database interaction. The add method in the local data source implementation overrides the method defined in the abstract. It takes a node object as a parameter and insert into the database using the database helper dot add method. And this method returns like a visual of node as you can see. And this code provides a particular implementation of local data source for nodes, utilizing the database helper class to execute essential operations such as like insertion, fetching, updating, or like deletion of nodes. Now we are ready to create the repository within the data layer. The repository plays a vital role in connecting our domain and data layers. We have talked this when we create a domain layer and then we created a repositories. And we have talked that repositories in the domain layer is our gateway to repositories with the data layer. We begin by creating a repositories under the data folder and crafting the node repository implementation dart file, this file. In that this file, a class named node repository implementation is defined, which implements the node repository interface. This class incorporates an add node method, this method. And this method accepts a node entity object and converts it into a node object and inserts it into the node local data source. It subsequently returns the original node entity object wrapped in either object. If any errors occurs during insertion, it, it returns a database failure object encapsulated within the either object. Here within the try block, a new node object is created by invoking the for entity method on the node entity parameter. It then calls the insert method on the node local data source, passing a newly created node object as a parameter. If the insertion is successful, it returns a right value containing the original node entity. In case of any error during insertions, if the database exception is thrown, it catches the exception and returns a left value with the database failure object encapsulating the exception message. Now, we shift our focus to the presentation layer which is primarily this with the user interface or the UI. We begin by creating the presentation folder and further categorize it into block, page, and widget subfolders. The clean architecture principle dictates that the domain layer should remain free from implementation as specific like UI frameworks or state management libraries. It is all about focusing on the business logic and errors without trying it to any particular. The blocks and state management should live in the presentation, which deals with the UI and the state. This way, the domain layer can execute business logic and fetch the data without knowing about the state management data. And this separation simplifies maintenance and testing that is going to ensure a clean and flexible structure of your source code. Now, we proceed to create our blocks. First, we create the state and then the events. Inside the block file, we use these dependencies from our use case, which are passed as a parameter to the construct. We have talked that the use cases from the domain layer are the gateway to the state management or to the presentation layer. So, to handle events, we register an event handler using the on method and create a method encapsulated within a try block. Inside the try block, an asynchronous operation is assigned to a variable named result, and the fold method is then utilized which involves two functions. The first function is executed if the result indicates a failure, leading to the emission of the node error state, with the failure message as a parameter. 
but if the result signifies a success, the second function is executed, adding the event to the event queue. In case of any errors within the try block, they are caught by catch block on this part of the code. And if we talk this much about the state management or the block, let's see the UI. So we are not going to focus much on the UI as this video is about clean architecture. The one I'm going to show you the page, everything, the UI is like, so as you have the general information about the UI. So this code is about like clean architecture, so just focus on the concepts or on the ideas of the clean architecture. Within the page folder, we create these three pages, the home page, the first one. And this page displays all the other nodes and serves as our initial page. It utilizes a block builder widget from the block library to manage the different state of the node block. And depending on the state it displays, like for the node loading state, it shows a circular progress indicator. For the node loaded state or node loaded after insert state, displays the display nodes widget within the nodes from the state. For the node error state, it displays or presents an error message derived from the state and for any other state results in a non-state message. And the other page is the add node page. And this page allows the creation of a new node by providing a title and details upon saving. The node is saved and users are navigated back to the home page. Node detail page. And the third page is the node detail page. When a user selects a created node, they are directed to this page where they can view the details about the node and within the widgets folder there are three files that facilitate the automation of our ui so if we talk about this much about the ui as i mentioned earlier this video is about green architecture so just focus on the concepts of green architecture and until now we have seen in the green architecture we have created the domain layer the data layer and here we are the presentation layer as a feature we already have created how we are going to add a node to our database this means we have achieved two major milestones First, we successfully added a feature to insert nodes into our database. Now, let's move on to the next exciting step, which is going to be retrieving those added nodes. To accomplish this, we will start from the core of our application, the domain layer. We will make our way through the repositories, data layer, and the data source, and then the presentation layer. Start from the domain layer. So, in our domain layer, in our rep node repository interface, we will add the fetch node method. This method returns a feature that can result in either a failure or a list of node entities. And then let's move to our data layer. Inside the data source, specifically the database helper, we will create a fetch method. This method will return a feature containing a list of nodes retrieved from the local database. In the node local data source.dart file, we will define an abstract method fetch inside the node local data source abstract class. And this method returns a feature of a list of node object. And then inside the node local data source implementation class, we will override the fetch method and it will use the database helper instance to retrieve all the nodes from the database and return them. With the data layer set up, we will now connect it to the domain layer. In the node repository implementation .dart file under the data layer, we will add the fetch node method inside the node repository implementation class, which extends the node repository from the domain layer. This method retrieves a list of nodes from the data source and returns an either type, which can be either failure in case of an error or a list of node entity object when the operation succeeds. Now, with the data and domain layer seamlessly connected, let's move on to the presentation layer before that. Though we need to establish the connection between the domain and the presentation layer using the use cases. We have already integrated the state management into the presentation layer. So, we'll connect the domain and the presentation layer through both the block. So, let's move on to our domain layer. In the node use case .dart file, we will add a fetch node class. It takes a node repository object as a parameter and provides an execute method. And this method returns a feature that can result in a failure or a list of node entity objects. And it calls the fetch node method from the repository object. Now, let's go to our presentation layer. In the block file, we will declare a variable named fetch nodes of type fetch node. We have already set up the events and the state. Now we will create an event handler to listen for the add node event and execute the fetch node function when triggered. The fetch node function follows these steps. First, it emits the node loading state to indicate that nodes are being fetched and executes this part and checks the result using the fault method. If it is a success, it emits a node empty state. If the node list is empty or not loaded state within the nodes if they are available. Now, when we move to our app's homepage, you will notice we are using a block builder that checks for a not loaded state. 
However, you will face these issues with displaying the nodes on the screen. Yes, you have implemented both the adding and the fetching, but you can't see anything. It is time to address the dependency injection. Dependency injection in that is a design pattern where dependencies are provided to a class via a constructor parameters or other methods. Well, and we will integrate the get it library for dependence injection. Or you have to go to the perspec.yaml file and add this dependency. In an injection.dart file, in the root directory, we initialize a service locator called locator using the get it packet. Certainly, let's elaborate on each step of the dependence injection process. And the first process is initialization. We begin by defining an asynchronous function called init. And this function serves as the initialization point where where you set up the dependencies within the locator. And the init function prepares the ground for the rest of the dependency injection process. And the next step involves registering a factory for creating instance of a node block class. And this factory function is essential for dynamically creating node block instance as needed. And this factory function takes two critical dependencies. And these dependencies are crucial for functionality of the node block. And the locator, which acts as a central hub, for dependency management is used to retrieve instances of these dependencies when constructing a new node block. This dynamic creation ensures that each instance of the node block has access to the necessary tools and resources to perform its tasks. Here you register the latest singletons for the fetch node class. A singleton ensures that only one instance of fetch node exists throughout the application lifecycle. The concept of lazy means that this instance is created only when it is first request. To establish this singleton, the locator is utilized to retrieve an instance of fetch node class. And this instance is then passed as a dependency to fetch node construct. This guarantees that the same fetch node instance is available for use whenever it is required, promoting efficiency and consistency in the application. Similarly, a lazy singleton is registered for the insert node class, just like the fetch node. In this step, a lazy singleton is registered for the node repository interface. However, this is not just any node repository. It is an instance of node repository implementation, an implementation that relies on the node local data source for its functionality. The locator plays a pivotal role by retrieving an instance of node local data source, which is then used as a dependency when creating the node repository implementation. And this ensures that node repository has access to the necessary data source to perform its operation consistently and efficiently. Finally, the last step of this process, you register the lazy singleton for the node local data source interface. Again, the lazy nature ensures that there are only one instance of node local data source available throughout the application lifecycle. This time, the implementation is used node local data source implementation. When creating this instance, the locator is utilized to retrieve an instance of the node local data source for use as a dependency. And this is a further solidifies the structure of your data layer, ensuring that the local data source remain consistent and accessible through the repositories. And now, let's go to the main .dart file and update our main function like this. And here you are initializing the dependency injection and then let's move to the my app widget and return the multi-provider. Here we are creating a multi-provider widget that wraps a material app widget and it provides a node block instance to the widget tree using the block provider. Inside the multi-provider, there is a list of providers and in this case, there are only one provider. The create parameter of the block provider is set to a function that returns an instance of a node block. And here, the di.locator is used to retrieve the instance of a node block from the dependency injection container. Finally, we have reached the culmination of our system. When you launch the app, you will notice a blank homepage awaiting your interaction. To begin your journey with your app, simply tap the floating action button. And this action will take you to the add node page, where you can start creating and recording your nodes. Once you have created your node, don't forget to save. Your first node will then appear before you, and it is a moment of achievement. You have just successfully created a Flutter app that follows to the principles of a clean architecture. And if you are eager to dive deeper into the code and explore further possibilities, you can access the entire source code on our GitHub repository. We trust this video was valuable to you. 
And if you have any question or in need of assistance, don't hesitate to leave your queries in the comments. And remember, this is just the beginning of your potential. But if you want to dig deeper and learn more about clean architecture, then simply visit our heyflutter.com and apply for the 12 weeks Flutter training to avail the complete course about clean architecture and much more.